Hey guys, and welcome back to another Emerging Force tutorial. In today's video, I'm going to be showing you how to attach a weapon to the player. So in my example, I'm going to be using a sword. So what you'd want is when you attack, so you do an attacking animation, you'd want the sword to be in the player's hand and for it to follow through with the animation as well. So I'm going to be showing you how to create this today. So let me hit play and show you what we're going to make today. So you'll see that as I'm running, the sword is in the player's hand and it's following along, moving perfectly like so. And if I to press my left mouse button, which is my attack, you'll see it is going to follow along like that as well. So again, this is quite basic, but a little bit complicated for some beginners. So what I'm going to be going over is just attaching anything really to a socket of the player. But in this case, it is a sword and it is a weapon, which I am attaching to the player. So it's always going to be moving about in the socket like so. So this is what we're going to be going over and creating today. So without further ado, let me delete this code and I'll show you how I've done it. So the first thing you want to do is obviously import your animation and your weapon mesh, which you're going to be using, which I've already done. So I've got this animation off of Mixmo here, which I've just retitled to the UE4 mannequin. And I've also got a sword weapon here from the Infinity Blades pack, which you can download from the Epic Marketplace as well. It's free to use and you can also use all of this stuff in your game too. There is a lot more in this pack. I've just deleted everything which I'm not using just to save up on space. But I'll leave a link to that in the description. And so once you've done that, we're gonna to want to open up our skeleton for our player. So for me, that's gonna be mannequin, character, mesh, UE4 mannequin skeleton. So again, open up the skeleton for the player you are currently using, or for the character, sorry, you're currently using. Open it up straight away. And this is where you want to decide where the sword or the weapon is gonna be held. So I want mine to be held in the player's right hand. So I'm gonna select the right hand like so, it's called hand underscore R. But what I want to do is I don't want it to be there because you'll see that's actually on the wrist. So I want to create a new socket specifically for this weapon. So I'm gonna right click on the socket over on the left here under the skeleton tree. And I'm just gonna simply add a socket, press F2 or select it, press F2 to rename it. And I'm gonna name this weapon socket like so. Make sure you keep in mind how you spelt it I'm going to spell it like that. Spelling, spaces, capital letters, all has got to be the same later on. But again, you can obviously spell it however you want, but just make sure you remember it. And once you've done that, you can obviously move the socket to be wherever it is that you want. And it's going to be parented to the right hand, which is what makes it perfect. So wherever the right hand goes, the weapon socket goes. Wherever the weapon socket goes, the weapon goes. So that's why it's amazing. However, you'll see we don't really know where we want this to be because we don't have a reference of where the weapon's going to be. So what we can do is right click on the weapon socket and then we can add a preview asset. So now we know where the sword's gonna be and what it's gonna look like. Mine is named SK Blade Black Knight and I can add it in like so. So now we can see what the sword is gonna look like when it is in that socket position. But the player's not gonna be in a pose like this, are they? They're gonna have an actual animation. So we can do another preview. Up in the top right, we've got preview controller. We're gonna change that to be use specific animation and I'm gonna change this to be my sword, shield, and slash, like so, so I can actually see the player attacking like this. I'm just gonna pause the animation and go back to right at the beginning, like so, just so I can see where it is. Now I'm gonna select my weapon socket again, and you can see that it's really out of place. It's not in a good position at all. Sorry, I keep pressing space by accident. There we go. So you can see it's not in a good position at all. So let's move and rotate it. I'm also going to lower the camera speed so I can really get into the details of where I want to be. And really this is where you just change it for how you want. So it's probably going to be different for you if you're using a different weapon mesh and a different character mesh. Again, move it and rotate it into the position which looks best for you. And you can obviously toggle off snapping here as well to get more specific of where it's going to go. I'm also just rotate it around a bit like this as well. So again, just for the tutorial, I'm not gonna go too into detail of it, but I think something like that is gonna look good for me. So the sword is now in the player's hand with that rotation, that position, and that's gonna look great for me, I reckon. So if I have to deselect it, hit space, play the animation, this is what it's gonna look like with the sword in the player's hand. Now obviously the sword's quite big, so you might wanna scale it down a little bit, but again, I'm not really gonna bother too much just for the purpose of the tutorial. I'm just showing you how it works. You can obviously go into more detail and make it look better for you. I might raise it up a little bit though. So if I were to select the weapon socket, move it up like so, that looks a little bit better. So I think that is gonna work perfectly for me for the weapon socket positioning. So we can save and close this. That is now the socket set up for where the weapon's gonna be. However, if we press play, nothing's here because obviously all we did then was add in the socket. 
the sword that was in there was just a preview, it's not actually there. So we now need to create this to attach it to that socket on the player. So let's go to content and what I'm going to do is create a blueprint for my weapon. And I would recommend doing this as well. It's also just good practice anyway because then you can do all the code for that weapon, i.e. the damaging inside of that blueprint for the weapon, which I'd recommend doing as well. So I'm going to right click, go to blueprint class, create an actor, and I'm going to name this sword BP. Now you may already have this, if you do, perfect, you can just use that one. In here I'm going to add a component, adding a skeletal mesh, and the mesh of this is going to be my weapon, which for me is this sword. Compile, save, that is all we need to do in there. Now again, you can obviously do more code and do more stuff in here, so maybe add particles or other meshes as well if you wanted, but for me this is the basic thing, we just need the weapon inside of a blueprint. Let's close that and open up our character blueprint, which for me is the third person character, but for you this could be third, first, or whatever you've named it. In here we want to go off of event begin play. So I'm going to hold down P, left click to get it here, and if you've already used it, you can hold down S, left click to get a sequence, with then zero going to the code you have now, and then one going into the code we're about to do now. I haven't used it yet, so I don't need that. So what we want to do is we want to spawn in the weapon and attach it to the socket. Very simply, we can come out of event begin play, get a spawn actor from class, the class is going to be our sword BP or the weapon that we just created. And the spawn transform wants to be the socket. So we can get the mesh, as the mesh is the skeleton, the skeleton is where we created the socket. Drag out the mesh and get socket transform. And now this is where I said it's important to remember how you spelt the socket name. Because it does need to be exactly the same as that's how it's going to search for it. So I named mine weapon with a capital W, socket, no space, capital S, like so. So again, if you can't remember, you can obviously just open up your skeleton and double check it anyway, but this is how I've done it. Leave the transform space as it is, and connect the return value into the spawn transform, like so. And that is now going to spawn the sword in the correct position. However, this is going to spawn it there, however it is going to stay there in the world space, it is not going to be attached onto the socket and onto the player. So we're going to come out of return value of the spawn actor and we're going to attach actor to component. The target should connect up automatically. The parent is going to be the mesh because again that is where our socket is. We want to connect it to the player's hand. And the socket name is going to again be our weapon socket or whatever you named it. So we're now attaching it to that specific socket. So it's spawning it in that socket's place and then we're attaching it to the socket as well. The location, rotation, and scale rule, we're going to snap to target, so again it goes to the correct position it needs to be in, and we can keep world simulated bodies ticked. Let's compile, save, close that, that should now be it done and working perfectly for us. So let's hit play and test this out. You can see that this is well worked. We've got the sword spawned in the player's hand where we wanted it, their right hand, the socket position we gave it, and if we move about, it's staying in there, moving with the hand as well. If I do my attack animation, it's moving with it perfectly as well. So that works perfectly. So I think that'll be it for this video, as we've done everything we want to do. We've set up so we can spawn in a weapon in the player's hand and attach it to the correct socket, which we want. So it's in the correct position, the correct rotation, the correct scale, and it's also keeping there as well. So it's moving with me as I move, as I jump, as I attack, all that good stuff which we want and need. So what we've done is again, we've attached a weapon to a socket, which this works for any sort of mesh as well. So thanks so much for watching, I hope you enjoyed and hope you found it helpful, and if you did, make sure to like and subscribe down below. So thanks so much for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.